Okay, so I was just telling Eric, we're going to treat this a little bit more as like a live, right? We're not live, but we're going to treat this a little bit more like a live because I want to talk 2023 business planning and I don't have anything written out, right? I mean, you can see I, don't, I just a couple of topics here uh, that we're talking about today, but I am a verbal processor, right? One thing that I want, um, you know, to be able to portray uh, what I want to be able to show people is that it's okay to be real. It's okay to be raw. It's okay to just put yourself out there and, and figure it out because that's what I've done for most of my career in insurance, to be honest with you. Uh, and, and Eric's laughing behind the camera uh, because he gets to see it in action every day, day in and day out. And we're not talking about flying by the seat of your pants, like, you know, flippantly, right? We're talking about, hey, listen, there's only so much one can get done in a day, a week, a year. Uh, we're going to have to figure the rest out. It's not a big deal. There's only so much that, you know, I'm going to be able to learn in such a short period of time, right? Some of it, I'm going to have to learn the old school way, right? Like through the school of hard knocks. And so, uh, we're going to talk 2023 business planning. And I have a couple of ideas of some of my goals and we're going to get uh, into uh, some things that we haven't talked a whole lot about. Um, so I want to give you the backstory first on how we finished 2022. Okay. Um, we have a like full documentary series that we want to roll out on this uh, that'll go into more depth. But, um, you know, to put it frankly, I started a new agency the end of last year, right? Call that agency signature Medicare solutions. I'm still doing under 65, still, still, you know, that's my baby. Uh, this is, this is where you probably know me from is doing under 65 health insurance. But one thing that I've always done, and, and I'll relate this back to when I was a kid, and this is, it's funny how it all ties in kind of full circle. When I was a kid, I was, I was, made fun of, right? I was picked on, um, not bullied, not like, not like that. I wasn't like, Oh, poor me. Like I was fat and chubby and they, you know, beat me up or whatever. I mean, I remember I had, uh, the bull Evans on, uh, and he said that they pinned him down and poured chocolate milk down his face. It wasn't like that. I was just picked on because I would, I would change from like a skater to a redneck, to like a BMXer, to like a surfer, to like a punk rocker. Like I, I remember it's like, fifth grade, I was like punk rock, like no effects, like MXPX. I was like, had patches on my pants. And like, I was like a punk rocker, which is because I skateboarded. And then I just turned into more skateboarder and redneck. But I, these are labels that like other people placed on me. These aren't, this isn't me describing my, uh, you, you know, like what I was trying or attempting to be. This is just me, right? I was just, just, unique in, in the sense that I didn't really care. I didn't really want to fit into one box. And so, um, you know, full circle when it comes to insurance, I've known from day one and, and really like from the beginning that I wasn't going to just fit into one box. Like I wasn't going to just do one thing, uh, and do one thing only. Now I do believe going all in on one thing. And that's why I spent the last better part of the last five, six years, you know, building out an under 65 focused on just that market, not doing a whole lot of life insurance, not doing a whole lot of Medicare. Um, but all the while building relationships, learning, studying different business models, looking at different, um, you know, opportunities, right? And so I would never turn down the, an opportunity. I would never turn down the opportunity to look at another opportunity, I should say, right? There are definitely times where you want to turn down opportunities. So say all that to say, you know, in 2022, the end of 22 started a Medicare agency. Um, we are now up to 30 employees, full-time employees, W2 employees really quickly. That was four months ago, uh, four, four and a half months ago. And, uh, we're up to 30 employees. We finished 2022 with almost 2000 apps. I'll save some of the, uh, you know, the fun and the secrets for the docu series. Hopefully you guys check that out. Honestly, drop a comment. If you've watched to this point and, and you've heard that and you're like, wow, that's cool. I want to hear how that happened because I want to share with you how that happened. So 2022 started this agency, you know, still growing, uh, on the under 65 side, but that's just, you know, to share with you where my mindset is going to be for 2023 or kind of is now and in, in the things I'm thinking about. So one of the things we're up to 30 employees and the breakdown of that is 20 in office agents. So right here in Sarasota, uh, we have an office downtown. We have 20 agents in the office and we have 10 
agents in uh, 10 agents remote. Okay. We, uh, we had an opportunity to start the remote thing. We didn't plan on doing it as early as we, we have. And um, you know, we're having a lot of success with it. So we're excited to, to see that side grow. So my two big goals for the Medicare agency in 2023, and again, I'm a verbal processor. So some of these things I will be changing as I talk through them. That's why, that's how I process, right? So this is uh, as much for me as it is for you guys. I want to get to 40 in office agents. Okay. 40 in office. That would put me at anywhere from, um, I would say probably four to five support staff. This is contracting, customer service. Right now, uh, we have we have two for customer service retention. So we would double that along with doubling the, um, you know, the, the number of in office agents we have here. Okay, so uh, four to five support and retention. We're at 10 remote agents now, I would like to be to 50 remote agents by the end of next year. So that'll include onboarding a, a, a quite a few before AEP of next year. So we'll be at 40 in office, four to five support, and then 50 remote, which t technically uh, we should probably be more like eight to 10 support. So we'll say, uh, we'll say eight to 10. And the reason why I'm, I'm able to give a range here, you want to get specific with your goals, of course, but the reason why I'm able to give a range here is because I got to back all these numbers out and see what, see what makes actual sense, right? Um, so it's either going to be eight or 10 or eight or nine. It's not going to be eight to 10, right? I don't recommend you set your goals with a range like that. Set it a specific number. Um, funny thing is I set a number of, um, I think it was a 1500 apps for AEP of this year. And we did like 1600. So we went over and above, but I feel like if I would have said 2000, we would have probably been at 2100. We would have slightly, you know, beat that goal. So, you know, set good goals for yourself. And the reason why, uh, I'm, I'm totally good with 40 in office agents, 50 remote agents. Cause I, I do have a focus and that's for signature Medicare guys. So that's my Medicare agency, signature Medicare solutions. And then for um, elite performance, okay, or elite health partners, I would like to grow that to we're, we're at about right now we've we've definitely um, we've definitely kind of condensed right we've got kind of our our we stopped recruiting to that agency. I haven't onboarded an agent in a, a little while. You know, we've got kind of our core team. Um, so our core team is probably 15 to 20 core agents right now. Uh, I'd like to get that to 50 agents again. Okay. Back up to 50 agents. I'd like to, and these are, these are agents. These are not agents that have just a contract or two, right? We do have uh, the ability to, you know, contract for a few different carriers and things like that. Just, uh, these are like full all in 100% contracted with us and all in on our vision and goal, uh, 50 agents, not, you know, uh, 50 agents that have one has a, one has a natch in contract with us. One has this, we want agents that are all in and, and ready to get after it. So 15 to 20, um, currently get that up to 50 agents writing both ACA and under 65. So we'll just say under 65 focused on under 65, um, and open a new office, another office here in Sarasota. So then I'll have two offices here in Sarasota. We currently shifted the um, the under 65 to remote while we built the Medicare agency. It's been a blast. It's been fun. But one of the reasons, guys, why I haven't shared a ton of this with you is because it's not necessarily, you know, um, big time public knowledge, right? I didn't, it's not... Um, you know, it's not something that I wanted to put out there all at once. Like, Hey, I'm shifting over here. I wanted to do it kind of in silence and, and, and do it really well. And then say, look, 
you can do this too, right? Like, like look at all of the possibilities in the insurance space. You don't have to pigeonhole yourself. You don't have to box yourself in to one. Now it is good to specialize, right? And that's why I didn't share that right away because I don't want to be a jack of all trades. I want to be a master of insurance, right? Insurance, insurance, insurance. It's what I do. It's what I love. Uh, it's a lot of reason why I backed away from a lot of the coaching, the speaking and stuff. I want to be building real businesses. So as I talk through uh, some of the 2023 business planning, I realized that, you know, the, the, the focus of it is based on people, right? The focus of it is building uh, teams, right? My strengths, my, my, the, the, the biggest things that I'm, you know, uh, good at, right? So those goals are, are a non-issue to me. Now, my big goal that is, those goals for me are like not even like the big, hairy, audacious goals. Those are like goals that I know that I can accomplish. Um, but the other side of it, right, the thing, the, my focus, the main uh, driver for 2023 is uh, is purely, and I don't know how to really describe it, um, I guess finance related, okay? Um, one of my biggest goals, I hired a CFO, right? Somebody that knows finance, that knows business, that knows P&Ls, um, balance sheets, you know, all, all of these uh, terminology, ter all of this terminology that I'm not, has not been my strong suit and, uh, and that I want to learn. And so my goal for 2023 is to master uh, the finance of business. Okay. That's one of the fun things of the call center with W2 employees and, you know, um, and, and an inbound model. It's, it's just a, it's a different business where where I can literally look at the financials every day and kind of tell exactly where we're at and see where we're growing and do projections and all of that stuff. So I've hired a CFO uh, that will meet monthly to really hone in on P&Ls, really get a, a good grasp on uh, the financials of business so that I can scale and continue to scale and potentially have an exit down the road, which is the main goal, not for 2023, but, uh, the main goal of the Medicare agency. So uh, I just shared a whole lot. Uh, honestly, it makes me a little uncomfortable to share as much as I've just shared. So I'll probably stop it there uh, just because, you know, it's, it's a, it's a real look at what, where I'm actually at, what I'm really doing. It's not necessarily all glamor and glitz that you see on social media all the time. Uh, but this is real life, real stuff, where my head's at currently as we go in to the new year. And it's all about building agencies building and, and mastering insurance like I said. How my health insurance hustle up Bradley Hanley's the name I'm here to teach these agents how to play the game I'm a health insurance hustle up one thing you should know about me I'm